assalamu alaikum students uh, in this lecture we are going to study about circular convolution we will revise first we will revise convolution integral and convolution sum then we will move towards periodic and circular convolution and with the help of some examples we will uh, try to understand how to calculate periodic or circular convolution uh, as you have studied before this is a general representation of a function x t in terms of shifted delta function this one is shifted delta function and on the similar lines and we know that uh, the output of an LTI system can be represented like this this yt is the output xt is the input and ht is the impulse response of that LTI system this one this equation shows that the output of an LTI system is the convolution of input and impulse response of the system this symbol the static symbol represents convolution and this one is specifically for linear convolution okay with the help means uh, on the on the similar lines as this first equation we can write this function like this one here x is the uh, input h this shifted delta this is the shifted impulse response of the system the convolution this is the integral of the convolution and we call it convolution integral here there are two things means um, we can represent it in two different ways x tau times h shifted by tau or we shift x input function by tau and keep the impulse response as it is so the answer to both uh, methods will be the same so this one is actually the convolution integral okay now we take a look at convolution sum as we have uh, studied before this is the discrete time representation of the sequences so we know that a discrete time sequence x n <coughs> can be represented <coughs> in terms of a shifted delta function through this expression through this mathematical expression and in a similar way like before we know that the response of an LTI system can be expressed as convolution of input discrete time sequence and discrete time impulse response of that LTI system so uh, using this equ equation in the top one we can express our y n like this this is this is the sum of the product of x uh, input sequence a discrete time input sequence times shifted h or the shifted impulse response okay if this here if this is a shifted impulse response and the input is not shifted so this can be uh, reversed also like this we can shift x and keep m as static the answer to both uh, the result of both of these uh, methods will remain the same this one is called as convolution sum the integral uh, the convolution integral has an integral uh, and it, uh, that stands true for continuous time signals and convolution sum has a summation and it stands true for uh, discrete time sequences okay now we come to circular convolution the circular convolution is used for convolving periodic sequences and uh, this convolution is performed only on one or the fundamental period of the sequences and it is also periodic with the same period 
the convolution of two periodic sequences x k and h k x is the input and h is the impulse response of a system of identical period k naught this is the period of x k and h k both both have the same uh, <coughs> fundamental period both are periodic and have and both have same period k naught the period the convolution or the periodic convolution of these two sequences can be expressed as this so here the only difference is this symbol now the symbol is different this is a, a multiplication inside a circle so this is a specific uh, symbol used for circular convolution and it is in the form of sum in convolution sum it is represented like this uh, just like before the only difference is that now this sum is performed only on one period or k naught okay previously it was from minus infinity to plus infinity but in circular convolution it is over one period only the fundamental period we call it circular convolution because we can compute it by circular representation of the sequences okay for example uh, if we have x uh, consisting of eight points and h also eight points we can represent in the form of circles first the inner circle uh, inner circle is representing x which is static one it does not move uh, and it we started from the right side you can remember it from the uh, the the re compass uh, representation like in compass the right side is east then it is west then it is north and then it is south here so we start from east and then go clockwise from there okay so first element of x goes here second here third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth and after that we draw a concentric circle with the inner circle and larger in size uh, then we distribute the elements of h on it starting from the same point as the x so first one here but in this we distribute samples in counterclockwise direction first here second here third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth so once we have done it after this distribution we start multiplying each pair x now x0 with h0 x1 with h7 x2 with h6 x3 with h5 and so on and then add them together to get our first point of the output sequence then we have to rotate the outer circle in clockwise direction like this and then we multiply all of the new pairs again the first we multiply h uh, sorry x no x0 with h1 then x1 with h0 x2 with h7 and so on we multiply all of them then we add those products to get the second point of this y n sequence and then for third point we rotate it again then for fourth we rotate it again and we keep on doing it until we unless we complete uh, our the uh, unless we do it for full period k naught let's do an example let us consider uh, x and h uh, we have two uh, sequences x and h both consist of four points 1 2 minus 1 and 3 and h is uh, 0 minus uh, 0 1 minus 1 and 0 we do a, their circular representation first we represent x like before we start with uh, 0 uh, so we, we start with from the east we place our first point here one here then we go count uh, we, then we go clockwise then two here then this minus one this one here and then three on the top north then we distribute our h or the impulse response over the larger concentric circle this one 
we start from east as usual zero goes here but in for this distribution we'll go counterclockwise one here minus one here and zero here now we'll calculate our first uh, sample for the output sequence how we multiply these two together these two together these two and these two in order to do that first uh, we write like this so in this region uh, i will write the products of h and x and here i will compute the points or the elements of the output sequence okay first one times zero here then two times zero then minus one times minus one then three times one the, the, like this and then we will add them together to get our first sim, uh, first element of the output sequence the first element is four next we will rotate it clockwise like this now we'll multiply them again multiply each pair again like this and then we add them together to get our second point of the output sequence then we rotate it again and we multiply 1 with minus 1 2 with 1 minus 1 with 0 and 3 with 0 and then add them together to get our third point of the sequence then for the final one we rotate it again and we multiply and do the addition of the products to get our fourth point okay after that when we rotate it once more time in clockwise direction we are back to our initial position so 1 times 0 here plus 2 times 0 here plus minus times minus 1 here plus minus 3 uh, sorry plus 3 times 1 here means that if we do perform multiplication again we will get our first sample back again and then we rotate then we get second same same and same and so on therefore that's why we do not need to compute circular convolution beyond the fundamental period so one period is enough after that it will repeat itself now what will be our output sequence it will be this one 4 minus 2 3 and minus 3 okay now let's do another example of circular or periodic convolution in a different way so here we are asked to uh, find out the convolution of periodic extension of two sequences h n this is h n and this is x n both uh, are n is equal to four points long one two three four one two three four so that y n is periodic with n is equal to four you are asked to find out y n so y n is actually the convolution of x n and h n and it should, it should also contain four points it means it will, it will be periodic over four points so this one we will do it in a different way than the circular representation of the signals here we are going to use the table method in this table first we on the top we write sample number sample number 0 sample number 1 2 and 3 this is sample number 0 1 2 and 3 sample number 0 1 2 and 3 first we write x n below it this is the zeroth sample this is the first sample this is the second sample and this is the last third sample of x n now we will shift x n minus 1 means we're shifting it by one point how we are going to do it we pick the last one bring it to the front it is like a circulation you can consider it that way so if we bring the last one to the first and then push rest of the three towards right then for the next we shift one more time n minus two so it means that we are shifting x n minus one by one more step means we are again circulating we bring the last one to first and then shift rest of the three towards right do it once more x n minus three we bring two to the first one and uh, push rest of the three towards right now if we do it once more we will get our original signal back again here so we do not need to do any more 
now we will find product of h with these terms so h n or h 0 with x n first h 0 with x n this is h 0 is the first one the first sample multiplied with the first row so this is 1 if you multiply 1 with 1 1 1 times 2 2 1 times 0 0 minus 1 times 1 minus 1 now we do it with second sample of h so h1 times x and minus 1 means second sample of h and second row here so it is 3 and 3 times minus 1 minus 3 3 times 1 3 3 times 2 6 and 3 times 0 0 now for the next h2 this one with third row here so h2 is minus 1 so minus 1 times 0 is 0 minus time minus 1 times minus 1 is 1 minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 and minus 1 times 2 is minus 2 now for the last one we do the same thing again h3 or the last sample of h times the last row here so we multiply minus 2 with all of these minus 2 times 2 minus 4 minus 2 times 0 0 minus 1 times minus 2 is 2 and minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 now we have to find out our final sequence the output sequence that one we will get by adding these for the last means the products only the first sample will be addition of the first column only from here downwards not the shifted x only the product of x and h so 1 minus 3 minus 4 equals to minus 6 then we add these four together get 6 we add these four we get 7 and we get these four we get 5 therefore our output sequence is minus 6 6 7 and minus 5 here so this is our output sequence let us do the same uh, example with another approach that is matrix method in matrix method uh, we have same samples uh, we have we have same uh, sequences and we have to find same thing y n so we have x n which has four elements in it and h n that has four elements also so first we will get an empty matrix four by four x and that will represent x n so by why 4 by 4 because x n has 4 elements we need 4 by 4 matrix 4 columns and 4 rows so our first column of x n of this one will consist of the elements of x n in vertical way 1 will go to the first uh, then second will go to the second column uh, second element in the first column 1 will go here and minus 2 will go here like this so we have arranged these elements in the first column of this matrix and then we will start shifting we will start circling our elements minus 2 will go up and rest of the 3 will be pushed down like this now for the third one minus 1 will go up and rest of the 3 will be shifted downwards and then 3 will go up and rest of these 3 will be shifted downwards okay after we have filled in our 4 by 4 matrix we will make another matrix for h n like this h n will be a vector matrix that does not circle it is only one column that contains all the elements of h n after this we will multiply these two columns together like this this is the usual uh, this is the usual matrix multiplication and we get uh, one column matrix on the output which is which consists of minus 6 6 7 and minus 5 this is our y n or the output sequence <clears throat> you'll notice that the answer is same as before so uh, this is the matrix method and the previous one was the table method and before that that was the circular representation method so you can use any method whichever you feel easier to solve you will get the same answer that's all for today
thank you very much if you have any questions we can discuss over uh, kaizala or in our live session